Hey, what's up guys? Kyle here from RR Buildings and we're back on the interior of the RR Buildings headquarters 2.0. If you guys have been following along with this project, we've done a ton of work outside. There's still a lot to do, but you'll notice all the sheathing. We've even got windows installed in some of the window openings, but we are missing these guys up here. And these are three massive windows, but before we install those, Greg and I decided it would be probably wise of us to get this mezzanine done. And that is because we've got to haul like 40 sheets of LP Legacy subfloor, which is quite heavy. It's, it's super rigid, dense subfloor that makes an awesome flat floor, but it is pretty heavy. And I don't wanna have to haul them up there. So what we're gonna do is cut these, or at least one of these windows out, and then we're gonna use the Magni, since we still have it here, to lift the full bunk up to that window opening and just slide them in one at a time instead of manhandling them 10 feet in the air. So with this mezzanine, we've got a 24 foot eye joist that we'll cut down to size. We're about a 23 foot span. We're gonna be running those one foot on center. We've got the legacy premium subfloor like I talked about, and we're gonna be attaching to this massive girder truss that we installed way back when we did the trusses. And so now maybe it makes sense why we have that big girder because it is going to be supporting the entire mezzanine, the roof, and there's not gonna be any post installed underneath of it. This is gonna add about a thousand square foot to the square footage of the building. So even though this is a much smaller footprint than what I had before, uh, this is gonna really help uh, get back some square footage and space to utilize uh, this 3,600 square foot area um, that I was kind of limited to. So it's unfortunate, but I think this is really gonna be pretty sweet. And to be honest, I think a lot more well utilized than before. But anyway, guys, this has been probably the most exciting part of this project was knowing that we were gonna build this mezzanine, that we were gonna be able to stand up there, that there was gonna be no post anywhere in this uh, in this area. It's gonna be completely clear span um, with this girder truss. What we need to do first though, before we get this going, is we need to locate the exact location of our floor system along the perimeter of the exterior walls. So we'll get our laser set up, we'll get some points, and we'll get this thing started. So let's get into it. Good enough for me. Good enough for me. Okay, so that's the bottom of our floor system. My thing is, that's the two outsides. I'm curious though, now that we have all of our rafters, our trusses, I should say, our sheathing on the roof, all that is installed and hanging on this girder. My engineer told me that there is always deflection in wood, which we know. I'm curious to see what is the middle of this girder truss like and how low actually is it sagging right now, which I guess at the end of the day, it could have been sagging day one just because the natural like, you know, lumber ups and downs. But as this is sitting right now, this is down one eighth of an inch on a 45 foot span. That's possibly the deflection that we're talking about, but it's an eighth also right there. It's perfect right there. I'm actually really surprised. Eighth of an inch with all that weight up there. It could just be mainly the, the kind of ups and downs in the lumber, but obviously there should be some deflection in this. I don't think it's possible to do this without, but actually I just said 1 16th because I'm on a different ply. Some of the plies are, they're not perfect. So that's awesome. We're gonna go ahead then, we'll use this as our reference mark and we'll go around and we will get marks on all of our columns where this point is so that our floor system is all perfectly level. To the next one, my good man, another. Okay. So these eye joists, which is, this is a little cutoff sample. They've got a three and a half inch top and bottom, and then they are 14 inches tall. So they're gonna be a very stout eye joist, but at 16 inches on center, we were pushing, not the max, because this is only like a 20, it's basically 23 foot yeah. span is what we're gonna have. And at 16 inch on center with a 480 deflection, I do believe we were at 24 foot six. So by going to a one foot on center, I had to buy more eye joists, but I, I will now increase my span potential 
into the 26 and a half range, which means I will have a stiffer floor when I go to one foot on center at a 23 foot span. Hopefully that makes sense. I like a stiff floor. I do not want bounce. This is what I opted for. So we are gonna go every foot from right there to a center, which means I'm going to set myself a nail. Now I'm just gonna be able to hook it. So I'm right where I wanna be. And that is the center of every floor joist, which means at three and a half, I need to come back inch and three quarters to the edge. Now, so that I don't get confused, not that it's ever happened that our layout has ever gotten off, but I am going to reset my nail right here. So that now I can hook and go every one foot. One foot, two foot. I think you get the picture all the way down. Lots of eye joists. There's gonna be a ton of wood in this floor system. The eye joists, the LVL, uh, my hangers. This was about a $5,200 cost. And I know if I would have done columns, I probably could have gotten away with an 11 and 7 eighths. Eye joists, I probably could have done an LVL uh, and, and broke this wall or this floor section up. And what I mean by that, is my original plan. I was gonna have a floor system that basically cut my whole uh, floor into three sections so that I could have a, uh, a smaller eye joist span the opposite way, but I opted for this clear span section and then a 24 foot eye joist that goes across the whole way and just gives me one nice clean floor. A little bit more cost probably, but I think it'll actually be a lot easier because I don't have to do all these random beams, post, I just, put a bunch of hangers on and we'll be able to go about our way. So we'll go ahead and get this all marked and then we will use a scrap. We'll take ourselves our hanger and we can put it right here, right where the scrap goes. You guys maybe have seen us do this in the past and then we can tack these onto this LVL before we ever install it, which will make our job much, much easier. Pretty darn easy. Make yourself a little jig. Anytime you're doing something repetitious like this, anytime you can set it up in an assembly line fashion, do it, it will make your job much easier and probably, probably even a better quality job to be honest. Could you imagine doing all this up here, working at height and trying to hold everything? Things would be falling around and you'd be like, ah, good enough, that was good enough. Here. Everything is good because you, you can put it right where you want it. This is the Pazlo PPN, so it's a newer gun. And if you guys aren't following me over on Instagram, you should because over on Instagram, I partnered with Pazload and I gave one of these away to one of my followers. So, you know, go check out Instagram RR Buildings and follow me over there. A little bit different content than, than the YouTube channel. All right, guys, we've got all these joist hangers installed on this 27 foot, eight and three eighths inch long LVL that is 14 inches tall. So that's a big boy. And it is gonna go from this corner all the way over to this jam post. So Greg and I are gonna have to do that manually. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna set some blocks right on these columns where we marked with the laser and that'll give us something to set the LVL on so we don't have to hold it up. All right, so what we're doing, guys, is we've got to run this Myrex across. Uh, that's our air control layer. And before we put this LVL up, which we almost forgot, but we actually left a roll out so that we would remember we got to do this. And this will make our job easier in the end when we go to our air control details and our insulation, which is going to be later. We need this Myrex behind our LVL. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge pain. So we're trying to think how are we going to do that without making a bunch of holes in it because we need something to hold this LVL up. It weighs a ton. And so what we came up with is our Myrex actually goes down to about here and our LVL gets set here. So we just went ahead and took some two buys and hopefully we can slide our Myrex right behind this. It will not get any punctures through it, but we'll still then be able to set our LVL here temporarily while Greg and I screw it on because I don't know the exact weight. This was our original solution and we quickly realized that this was kind of dumb because we can't run our Myrex through here and still support our LVL. 
that was my idea and it was dumb. All right, that's done. We got our 169 over there. Let's go get that mark over there and let's get this Myrex installed. Jeez, it feels way too early to be doing this already, you know? Well, it really is. Yeah, but I think it'll save us a lot of work later. Ooh, pretty. So this is a smart uh, vapor barrier. It's our air control layer and it allows inward or it allows outward drying from your wall cavity in when you need that. And it also keeps moisture from going out into your um, wall cavity. How it does it, I don't know, clearly science, but there are, there are other few products on the market that are also smart systems like this where they allow um, different permeability, different ways inside and out. But we've used the Seago, we like it. We like Seago, we like what they stand for. And that's why I decided to use it on my shop build. Hey, if you guys have questions about the air control layer, the Sega, the Rockwell, like that sort of stuff. By the time this video airs live, we'll probably be into that content, making that content, actually doing that work. So if you have questions about it, about this product, about why we're doing certain things, or maybe asking if we're going to do certain things or have ideas for me, all those good comments, drop them down below now so that I can see them, I can think about them before I actually make that content. Sometimes it's hard because you guys see these videos and I've already created the next video that you're gonna ask the question in. But I think this gives us an opportunity to kind of break open the conversation about air control, insulation, and all those kind of high performance building topics. And then we can talk about them when the time comes. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Almost there. All right, go crazy. You got it, you don't have it rolled up near enough, dude. Huh? You don't have it rolled up enough. I feel like this is one of those things that I might regret later. Don't go it's a lot easier to roll when I don't got your fat butt. What? Bro, I only weigh 165 pounds. I think that'll work. I think that that was a pain in a sense that I don't have the right machinery. If I had my scissor lift here, which just needs new batteries and needs to be brought over here, that would have been easy. It would have taken half the time. Yep. Just like doing this LVL right now with all those joists would have been much easier to put on the top of the lift and go yep. up to height. Yep. But instead I got you, buddy. How high do I need to go? I'm there. Where am I? Oh, uh, get, take, take it in. There we go. One, two, three. Yeah, I think we're tight. Mm, I don't think it matters. Maybe it no. don't matter. Nope, this is fine. We're just gonna we'll put all these hangers on and where I build the wall we'll just stop the last joist. I'll stop the last joist right here. My wall will go underneath of it after it's all done and said and done. And then I'll fill this space in with, with framing and make it because I'll have all those walls that I can set a header on and I can fill it in. So okay. this is, we'll put hangers on here, but this is the last joist we will install. So I'm just gonna write last, okay? Let me get close to the wall before you go in. You gotta get up higher. Yeah. Okay, there. All right, that is the headers. We got all the hangers over here. This is nice, it looks good. We do have a little bit of fixing to do in between that door. It looks like it is got a slight little bow out. And when I say slight, I mean maybe it's an eighth of an inch or so. You can just see it if you look at it but that'll all get straightened out when we do the sheathing or the decking on top. So now what we gotta do is we gotta get all of our hangers here. But 
instead of going up and trying to tack all those hangers, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some two by fours. Now remember at the very beginning, we went through and I put my laser um, grade stick up to the bottom of this girder. And it was, I think within what, eighth inch? Eighth inch was the most. I would love to snap a line and make it perfect on the top side, but that's not gonna work because this two by 12 right here is actually not tall enough for my eye joists because the eye joists are 14 inches. So I should get all of the, the nails on it that I need for those hangers because there's no, when I'm looking at a hanger, there are no um, nails. When I look at these nails, let's say 11 and a quarter. So there's my two by 12. So I'm gonna still get all my nails fastened into that two by 12, but the eye joist will stick out above that two by 12, which means I can't snap a line on the top side. I'm gonna just end up going off of the bottom side of this girder and I will be married to whatever the flatness of that girder truss is, which is within an eighth of an inch. It's gonna be okay. I've talked myself out of carrying any more than I can. So we're gonna take this two by four and we're gonna screw it to the bottom side of this girder, giving us a place to set our eye joist, fasten it so we don't have to work hard. And then we'll remove this and then install all of our hangers off the comfort and safety of our sick rolling platform that Greg still thinks I was dumb for buying and it's been a savior for us. So let's go ahead and get these installed. Then we can cut eye joists and start installing them. One ply, that'll give us plenty of meat and- One ply. Meat and potato. Meat and potato. Okay. I'm getting a little sag. I'm not worried about it though. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Because we got a three and a half inch top. If we get off a smidge, it's gonna be. Okay, let's go ahead and reset it. That's halfway. Ooh. Yeah, so bad. Whatever, dude. You'll get good someday. Row! 22, 10 and a quarter ish. Three quarters. 22, 11 and 5 16 it's 24 feet to the back of this, right? Yes. Well, 23, outside. 10, 23, 10 and a half from in the post, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I'm, I was adding, You're adding, I was just adding the inch and a half on the outside. <laughs> 22 <laughs> foot 11. 22 so foot. this is, according to that, it's out 5 sixteenths of an inch. 22 11. All right, we got our pile of eye joists. We got 40 eye joists here. And what we're gonna do is snap a quick line with a five and a quarter offset. That five and a quarter offset is from the edge of my base plate to the blade. And that way when I run my saw against this two by, it should give us the correct dimension of our cuts. That's the hope anyway. Let's go ahead and cut a couple because we know we have some that will be short. I'll cut through a couple, make sure we like our 90. Yep, yeah, don't go more than We're heavy on top. The first one? Yeah. No bueno. Because I when it went over, it dropped. Okay. I'm okay with so that. That's that. That's that. We actually are okay with that because I would rather mm -hmm. it be tight at the top where our measurement is mm -hmm. and a little bit loose at the bottom. Here, let's just double check because I don't see a mark. Let's just double check dimension. Make sure that we did because you know that thing might vibrate enough that it makes it a little short, Greg. Yeah. Which I'm okay with a little short. Up oh, 11 or 10 and 7 eighths. Okay, what about we're the good. Bottom? Let's just check, check the bottom. 10 and 7 eighths. There was a point in the middle that I didn't want to stop. Did you feel it? Did you notice it when I was going and I was like starting to stretch out really far? Dude, the saw was running like beautiful. It didn't like have any chatter to it. It was smooth and it just felt like it was cutting like a dream. I didn't want to stop, but I, I was kind of at the end of my reach, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't pull it off. Uh-oh. You good? Okay. There's my stick. It's going to be a little tight because that's a tall angle. I hope it doesn't fall off the bottom. How does it look? Oh, you got plenty of room. Okay. And I'm here to catch it. Okay, let me, uh, mm -hmm. let me 
Is that close to where you want it or you want it? <laughs> you know, this doesn't look as big up here as I thought. It doesn't look as big? No. I think once you cut open those windows, they'll look huge. Okay, that do it. Sucked it tight, yeah, as tight as can be. Come on. Let's see, where's the other post? Oh yeah, this one is spread apart about probably three eighths of an inch. So when we drive straight through, the goal is to just try to tighten everything up because this girder truss is not pretty. I mean, that wall is somewhat straight, but that also could have a little bit of in and out which we saw between the garage door, but we can't fix any of it. We can only screw everything tight together at the right dimension and then straighten out, kind of like we straighten out a building with the sheathing. We'll, we'll get a line or a laser or something and we'll just kind of push and pull things and we'll get it all straightened out. I'm not worried. If I die, I die. Hey, thanks buddy. Yep. Oh, that was my chest. I don't know what I hit, Greg. First you don't succeed. Hit her again. Hit her again. Yeah, but I sucked the crap out of it. <sighs> yes, I did. Yeah, that works. This sticks out over here, Greg. That's, that would be why it's tight. A little more. Okay, got it, got it. Uno, dos, tres. Oh my goodness. You should have seen what it did with that eye joist. Did it straighten it out? Yes. It like was Yeah, it was on the angle and it went yeah. and You saw it just like. Yeah, dude, it tightened that girl up. Oh, it's as straight as can be. <laughs> but we both know what you meant. We both know what you meant. I never did share with them that the good idea was this ledger board right here which is just always an easy thing to do if you're in a position where you can't maybe very easily put all the hangers on your beam like we did with the uh, LVLs over on the other side. It would be a lot of work to come in here, put all the hangers on, get them all lined up. This way it gives us an exact positive placement for every eye joist. We can fasten them, we can get them tacked up, pull this and then put our hangers right where they belong. So that was my cool way of doing it. Maybe it's not that cool, but. Easy saves way. a lot of time. Almost there. Almost there. Look at that though, dude. Sweet. Yeah. This is actually cooler than I thought it was gonna be. I was worried it would be kind of small feeling, but having it open up there makes it feel like it's, you know, it, if there's a wall right it there. It does make it over there feel bigger. Oh yeah, dude. This is a section I, I'm probably most excited about to get finished. Oh, 100%, dude. Like, this will be a hang point for sure. I'll even let you turn on a Packers game on the 100s. That's, that's saying something. That's, that's, that's true friendship. <laughs> Let's clean up for the night. We'll get back here in the morning. We'll cut these windows open, tape them, prep them. Actually, we won't tape them so we don't damage it. We'll slide we'll all of our, of yeah, we'll slide all of our sheathing right in these holes. We'll get this all subfloored and then we'll be able to have a dance up here. I'm not dancing. I can't dance. <laughs> I'll call Tim, see if he danced for us. Wait. Still sucks. It's building moose. Oh, post frame. It's weak. American made. Yep. Garbage, blowing the wind, tornado. All right, guys, so we got these eye joists all installed, ran out of time yesterday. We're gonna move into doing the subfloor. But before we do that, what you guys noticed was we put that ledger up there. We now need to get all of those eye joists attached to that girder truss. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna get all of our hangers on, we're gonna get everything secured. We're gonna get all that subfloor done up there and hopefully have ourselves a nice dance floor by the end of today. Yo, so guys, before we get started in there, it is kind of dark and gloomy and we need to do this anyway. We had the Magni fired up to warm up. So we're gonna go ahead and finally cut out these three big windows so that we can get that subfloor through, get some light, 
and it's gotta be done anyway. And honestly, I am stoked to finally see this front of the building with these windows opened up. Well, at least we got those cut open. We're gonna get the light we wanted. We have the access with our legacy. Let's go back inside and let's finish up these hangers so we can get into this subfloor. Kind of a little deviation in our plan, but I think it will be helpful for us in the future. Okay. We really gotta make sure that we have these joists tight to this header because we cut these all at the same length, knowing that we were gonna tighten everything up and then it should be straight I guess that's the hope. Because otherwise, trying to cut every one of these to size without having a straight line to go off of, like this girder header here, this truss is just kind of floating out here. Pilot bit was great, dude. And that sucked it in. It's not perfect, but it kind of popped at the very, very end. I wouldn't even say it looks that great back there, Greg. Can you guys already see why it's so much easier if you can get your hangers on beforehand? I might have done this a little different. I might have tried to get all these hangers on first. Why, why didn't we do this again? Do you remember? Oh, I know why I think. I think we wanted to be able to get them toenailed and tight. Oh man, this is tough. You know what I would do in the do differently next time? I would spend the extra 700 bucks, I think it was, for those two LVLs, and I'd run an LVL down this face, straight mm -hmm. as a freaking arrow, and then that would give us a place to put all of our hangers on, and we would just lag the crap out of it. Before we get up there, we need to do a similar thing as this side, where we run our Myrex behind here, and then we will mount this eye joist, which will allow us to finally put some subfloor on. So where's our Myrex, Greg? Let's get up there. Do you feel good about just walking on it or do you want to throw a couple boards up there? Low right there. What? Yep. No, no, I'm gonna have to get up above my block. Uh-huh. I'll go way high. Oh, you're gonna go way high? Okay, now get in there. Keep going up. Hold on, let me, uh, let me get this, this uh, paper in first. If I set mine down, then you can push oh. it my way. See? Yeah, I got plenty of room. Yeah, so go ahead and pull your paper, get it on the, get, get it behind your paper, then set it on your board that I got already for you. This is the wall I get. What? That's no, why I want the, like I can't go in any further. I'm either hitting something. Yeah, you're probably hitting, well, I don't know what you're hitting actually. If it's tight, we have to recut it. Which way did I just turn it? This way? Mm hmm So it's, a, it's the bottom one, you see the bottom one? And yeah, now we got it. Okay. I gotta get a couple more hangers. I stupidly used them over there where the staircase was, knowing that I only bought enough hangers for the joists that I bought which was not the joists that are gonna go in the stair area. So we're a couple shy, but it's okay. All right, guys, finally ready to go up and actually lay subfloor. Now I feel like we've been saying, hey, it's time for subfloor. And then we have another detail to do. So I was just getting my uh, adhesive shook here. I'm pretty sure this is way better than any handshaking I would ever be able to do. We got the premium subfloor adhesive to match our premium legacy subfloor. Are these expired? No. These all just got shipped in. Oh, okay. Good. Throw a couple in your pouch, maybe? I'll come over here and I'll put them in a safe place. All right, let's get this rolling. We got the Magni sitting here. So we were able to get all of our legacy up here. Well, not all of it. We got some downstairs that we'll have to bring up. But Greg, let's get a piece over there and then I'll start foaming, eh? Defend against a lifetime of squeaks. 12 times coverage in one can compared to the old caulk guns. PL40? Yeah, well, PL400, but. It's a 400? Yeah. Keep that. Every time you get one of those, 
you bring it to me after, and you can you can redeem it for rewards. What's a reward? Well, it depends. You got to check out the reward book. Oh. Careful. Yeah, I don't want it dripping all over this guy's uh, this guy's concrete floor, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm pretty sure he's gonna grind it anyways. Oh man, I just drip. Yep. Why am I tight there, buddy? That gusset plate sticks out just right there. Like I'm not on the. Can you, you can cut it with your knife? Well, I think I could cut it with a sawzall. <laughs> This girder truss is like the best worst thing about this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's even just a little bit tight right there. I'm good everywhere, but right here. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I'll just cover the line everywhere. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Oh, wait, yeah, go ahead and push me. Right there, hold that. Now I should be one foot on centers. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so the first piece, you know, we just want to make sure we're on this snap line that we started. Unfortunately, this stupid gusset plate where these girder gussets are, it like balloons up right there and I didn't really think about that because I figured how far off could it be. So we had to just take out a little bit of our tongue and then we wanted to make sure that we're lined up on the outside where we're supposed to be because there will be more framing that will go in this area later. This Myrex detail is not going to be very easy here, but we'll worry about that at another date. We've used these a lot and you can see these guys are kind of like a spiral nail, but they've even got little barbs on them. They claim a squeak free guarantee floor, even without the use of adhesive. But because I think you're only gonna do this one time, I don't want any squeaks. I'm gonna go ahead and also use the legacy adhesive. Mm -hmm. You got the far end? Yep. Okay, I got this. Gotta set a nail before you put the glue on. Is that, whose fault is that? Yours. Good use of a shingle nail for your spacer. A lot of people have been asking over on social media, like, why are you doing one foot on center? And if I didn't say it, which I think I did, it's because this is 22 foot 10. And when I did the, the ordering for the 24 foot eye joist, it came back with a span rating at 16 inch on center of like 24 foot six inches. I didn't know the exact interior dimension is 22, 10 and seven eighths, but I went to a one foot on center because it increased my span to 26 feet. In essence, giving me a lesser deflection when I went to a one foot on center. And yeah, it cost me more money, but I just wanted a more solid floor and that's what I went with. So you don't have to do one foot on center. You could, I could have done 16 inches. Million dollar flatness right there. That's what you buy. When you buy a million dollar house, you expect a, a floor that flat. 47. Uh, this one's the one. I don't know which ones are the ones with. Oh, Greg, it's every other, okay. but the last one is not joist nailed. So you can go on the second one in. Good? Yep. There. Yep. It's all you, all me. Way they work. Like the, the video explanation? Yeah. Okay. There. Oh, yeah. Use your senses of manship. So guys, when, when putting your tongue in the groove 
and I'm talking about subfloor, okay? You do not need to hit the wood super hard and jam it in there. It's just a nice snug connection. If you over jam it, then you could potentially be too tight and not get your expansion and contraction, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Oh, then, man. No, then. <laughs> what did I do? So right here, guys, where this sheathing is overhanging, my goal is for that to be the side of my staircase. So I'm gonna leave that long so I can put like a rim joist along that edge, get a nice finished edge, and then I'll just router it clean right on top of my wall. So that's why I got that overhanging. My goal is to have a nice five foot wide staircase. I want a lot of room there. All right, well, 38 and a half, 38 and 7 16 38 and 5 8 That's good enough for me, dude. It's not bad. 3 16 spread from one of the uh, most extremes? Yeah, I mean. Cut them all down the middle? Yeah, I'll just cut the short measurement and get buried in the wall. But I mean, I'm just happy because we started out with a really bad girder truss over here and we were able to get it pretty good. So finish this up. We got some rips to do. Oh, I love it. So loud up here though. Let's unload these last couples that'll get down for rips and then we can clean up. I don't know, I think this looks pretty good. It does feel smaller though. All right guys, we're back here Monday morning and I thought I was going to install the rest of this legacy this last weekend. Didn't have time because of just personal things that I had to do, non-work related. So Greg and I are gonna go ahead and do this right now. And I wanted to say, you'll notice, these windows are covered back up and that is because we had rain all weekend. It was crummy and I decided I didn't want that rain coming in here and I just went ahead and I did a little bit of temporary framing, put those sheets back in, taped them off and I'm kind of glad I did because you'll also notice probably, maybe you see my breath, maybe you see a little bit heavier jacket. Um, Greg and I are much colder today because it was in the upper 20s for a high today and it is what it is. So we're back. We're going to get this sheathing done here and get this subfloor finished. Another thing that Greg and I did this morning was we put some temporary lighting up and we got two lights up here. We got two lights out in the main area and we're just running them off of the MX Fuel power supply. So that'll probably get us about a half a day on the batteries and we have to swap batteries. So not too bad. But what we're doing now is we're just going to go ahead and measure this last row and see where we're at kind of on each post. What do you got there, Greg? Like 38 and 3 eighths tight. Okay. And we know they're not gonna be perfect, but obviously our goal is for them to be somewhat consistent. You wanna come back on this or what do you wanna do? There, now we can grab a measurement here. So that's like 38 and a half? And a half, yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna kinda try to find the smallest measurement as long as it's not crazy different. And we will cut all these down real quickly to the same. All right, that was pretty easy. When I went ahead and uh, got those sheets installed. So now the main floor section is done. Now, as we come over here, this is where the staircase is gonna be. And so I've just went ahead and just ran these sheets wild, knowing that this is, this is where my staircase will eventually be. And I also know that down here, the goal is for this to have like a four foot landing here. And then if we go over here, there'll be like an eight foot landing. So my staircase is gonna come up right around this column here and go down and it will be open through here but then I'll have a little landing back here where I'm thinking maybe like a, a server room or you know for all my cameras and you know top secret stuff will be in that server room and then this will just be a nice big landing of the staircase and then come over but I'm gonna leave this sheet off because that will be a full sheet and then this piece here will get cut or not cut I'll fill in whatever I have to where that stair ends but I, did, I just decided to run those long because I don't have everything but there's the space it's all done nice and lit up with the uh, temporary lighting. And Greg, go over there and show like how tall it is. Cause it's hard to kind of scale 
you know, like if you're kind of under that light. So Greg's 5'10", and the, the ceiling height in the middle is 9, 10 and a half. Plenty, plenty of height out at the very edge, Greg. What is it if you go back in that corner? Yeah, I think it's 7, 6 and a half or something like that is what that ended up being. So that is the same height as this wall over here as well. So we're going to go ahead and clean up. That's it for the subfloor for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I think doing this second story mezzanine has been an awesome journey because it includes a lot of firsts that we've never done. One being being the monster girder truss two being i think a 23 foot span is our biggest span for clear span i joyce you know really everything about this space is kind of new kind of cool let me know down below what you guys think about this space and i think in the end this was all in hopes to kind of give people idea of what you can do in a post frame for second story living space you know you want to build a an epic shop like this over here but have your living space on the end easy peasy lemon squeezy we're gonna wrap up and we're gonna move on to the next task which will be the next video here in the series so definitely if you haven't hit that subscribe button hit the like if you enjoyed this drop me a comment down below about what you guys think about this second story space how we did it and we'll catch you on the next video peace